Good morning. Welcome to this the first Sunday of a new year, a new uh, lunar year. And uh, welcome on this epiphany celebration of the revelation to the Gentiles. We begin on page one of our Tiffany Heavy Medium booklets. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. The Lord of glory be with you. Grace of God has dawned upon the world. Through our Savior Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We stand to say together, glory in, uh, in excelsis. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we collect for today the Epiphany. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, Mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for our witness. Readings taken from Ephesians chapter one. Chapter three. Chapter sorry. Chapter three. Oh, I thought it was on three to fourteen. <coughs> sorry. No, chapter three, one to twelve. Oh. Sorry about that. to 12. Is this the correct one then? Can you just come and check that? Oh, that's right. I did have the right one after all. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
that for this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs, heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Jesus Christ. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace, giving me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given me, to preach to the Gentiles the boundary scriptures of Christ, and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent, his intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we must approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. And the Gospel is written in the second chapter of Matthew, beginning at the first verse. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them. Then the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for this child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Heavenly Father, may you speak through your word into our hearts. May you challenge us, change us, and transform us as we seek to serve you more faithfully and grow and look more like you in our ways and in our attitudes. Amen. Please be seated. Now, I'm sure we're all familiar with the Christmas carol. That, in a moment, I will explain is not quite accurate. 
The Christmas Carol, We Three Kings. The melody has a lint lilting movement to it that helps us feel the movement of the Magi riding on camels from the east toward Bethlehem, towards Bethlehem. The carol lifts up the star of wonder that inspired the three kings, technically Magi, to undertake their journey. And it appears on many of the Christmas cards which we'll have been opening this Christmas. When training, we were taught that carols like We Three Kings cannot be sung during Advent or Christmas. And that's because it's not a Christmas carol. <coughs> it's a song for Epiphany. Obviously, we take little notice of that because we were also taught that you cannot sing Christmas carols until Christmas Day, and yet we all do. And that's all because in the seasons of the church's year, Epiphany follows the 12 days of Christmas. And that's the other thing about the seasons around this time of year. Christmas, for most people, begins sometime towards the middle of November, as soon as remember Sunday is out of the way, and finishes on Christmas Day. But in the church, we celebrate Christmas from Christmas Day until the 12th night. And the 12th night is technically this coming Thursday. Uh, well, actually, we celebrate Christmas all the way through until the beginning of February. But that's an even more complex uh, discussion that we won't have now. The star of Bethlehem is the, an epiphany star, rather than a Christmas star, according to worship experts. And I'm not a worship expert. It's not until Thursday that we're officially allowed to sing We Three Kings, or my preferred version of the Christmas, of the uh, that epiphany carol, as with gladness men of old, which I think is a far better carol actually than We Three Kings. We keep our nativity set up through the 12 days of Christmas, and then on Epiphany bring in the three wise men to complete the scene before taking it down on the feast of the presentation of Jesus at the temple, 2nd of February. But even though we're liturgically incorrect, and also probably historically incorrect, some scholars believe the Magi didn't reach Jesus until several years after his birth. I believe the story of the star and the wise men has a message that we need to hear as we approach the epiphany. The star of wonder has some light to shine on how we live as Christians in a world which is increasingly secular and sidelines the whole idea of Christianity as some old fashioned tradition, yet loves to celebrate Christmas as an opportunity to drink, eat, and be merry. The dictionary definition of epiphany is, well, there's two, a manifestation of a divine or supernatural being, and a moment of sudden and great revelation or realization. And I think it's basically when something surprising happens. Jesus came into the world and was revealed as the Son of God. And it was the beginning of the Jewish discovery that their long-awaited Messiah had indeed come to the whole world. He was revealed not to everyone, uh, sorry, he was revealed to everyone, not just a limited group of people. Not just those but following particular customs or traditions. Of course, the Jewish authorities failed to recognize Jesus as the Messiah and continued to wait, await his coming. And that may oversimplify, oversimplify the Jewish faith, but it is probably the simplest way to put it. But the Bible tells many accounts when Jesus is shunned by the authorities, when they simply do not accept that he is who he says he is. Perhaps the very fact that the Magi revealed him to the world was a forerunner to the way Jesus would be, wouldn't be recognized by the Jews. Throughout the Gospels, there are moments when it is recorded that when different people encountered Jesus, 
they had an epiphany and an aha moment. I'm not talking about that. And an aha moment when it dawns on them who he is, or that he was definitely worth following. Think of the fishermen who Jesus called to be his disciples, the woman by the well, and the centurion and others standing by the cross who remarked, surely he was the Son of God. That's in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27. When those people encountered Jesus, they had a life-changing experience, an epiphany. Despite us living in this increasingly secular age, people still experience epiphanies that lead them to recognizing and following Jesus. We as a church have a part to play in that, in the sense that we are called to provide opportunities which will guide people towards Jesus. It may be through a conversation, a kind action, or even offering a prayer. While God, not that offering a prayer can't be a kind action, while God is the one who brings people to faith, he often uses those who follow him to prepare the ground and provide the opportunities for God to do his bit. I also believe that God has brought about an epiphany in the life of the church over the last two years. We've been challenged, we've been confronted with a situation where we can't do church as we've traditionally become accustomed. Things have had to change. Some things have gone online. Some things we've uh, met with few people and live streamed as we are indeed doing this morning. It's a change. It's an epiphany. It's a new way of doing things. It is as though the upheaval and disruption caused to all our lives by hope has allowed God to do new things in the life of the church. And in our own small part of the church, the Church of England, God has brought to the fore the fact that we cannot go on as we were. We've been challenged by our own Archbishop that, and I quote him, in its current form, ministry in the Diocese of York is unsustainable. As a deanery, we are looking at the impact this will have on the local congregations. And some changes have been made already. So if you will be aware that Bishop Thorpe is no longer part of this deanery, nor is Poppleton. They've been moved out to join with other deaners nearby. And we're all facing upheaval and change. Admittedly, this unsustainability has been highlighted by the financial impact that COVID has had on the finances of churches and on the finances of the diocese. But I also think it has raised the questions, what is the church? Why do we do church the way we do? What is key about being church? It is so easy to get wedded to our buildings and the traditions which we have held on to for many years. Yet actually they are not key to what the Christian faith is all about. During the season of Epiphany in the church, we tend to focus on the star and the magi, the wise men who looked at the signs of the times and the stars to indicate what was likely to happen. As we gaze at the stars today and consider the magi, what is God saying to us about what we, as a part of the church, should be and can be doing? I believe we need, we need to reach out more to those who do not attend our worship events, not in order to get them to attend, but to have meaningful conversations with them, to challenge them, to get them to think about what their life is all about. Many people attended our Christmas fair. Usually many attend our village carol event on Christmas Eve. Both events were impacted by COVID. Octoberfest was severely impacted by COVID, yet, it was still busy. Lots of people who I would suggest are on the fringe of the church and perhaps even on the fringe of the fringe of the church came to such events. And they're all people who I believe can experience a life-changing encounter with Jesus, an epiphany that can transform their lives. We all have an opportunity to prepare the ground for those encounters 
that lead to those epiphanies. It is no coincidence that Jesus uses the parable of the sower to illustrate the ways in which we can share the good news with others. That parable is all about how we can play our part in preparing the ground for people to have God encounters. It raises questions like how do we welcome people to have rocky ground? What opportunities do we offer to help people grow in faith? Fertile ground. Do we tend to strangle people by the expectations we put on them when they come to worship? Weedy ground. As we head into 2022, we can all focus on the part we can play in bringing others to a place where they too can have an epiphany which can transform their lives and the lives of those around them. So this year, I call upon you all to pray, to consider and to look at the difference that God made in your life and see how you can bring about that difference into the lives of others. Now I invite you to stand as we <coughs> as we come to say together the creed, what we believe, page five. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. He parted from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayers and intercession. <laughs> Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Holy God, you sent a star to guide the wise men to worship your son, Jesus. Send your Holy Spirit to guide all churches as they begin a new year in their Christian life together. Inspire all church leaders in all that they do. Grant to Christians everywhere the spirit of adoration that through their worship and lives they may reflect the glorious light of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we pray for Christians throughout the world and especially for those who are persecuted because of their faith in you. We ask for your protection for them and strength and guidance, guidance for all individuals and organizations which seek to help them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, you sent your son to guide your people. 
we pray that you will send your Holy Spirit to guide our parishes as we begin a new year. We know that this coming year will bring significant challenges and changes, and we pray that you will always be present as we take one more step along our journey of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Creator God, as we face the unknown in the coming year, we pray for the world which has been suffering the COVID pandemic for almost two years. Let the star of your justice always shine in the hearts of the world's governments as they make difficult decisions to cope with problems at home and abroad. Enable all nations to recognize the sanctity of each and every human life in their care, so that all may experience peace and security. In a moment of silence, please pray for any country that is on your mind today. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father God, we give thanks for your presence with us in our homes and in our lives. Guide us in our relationships with family and neighbours, especially those in trouble or need. And bless those who have guided and enriched our own lives. In a moment of silence, Please pray for any aspect of life in our local community that's on your mind today. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Loving God, we pray for all those we know who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. May their pain be eased through your healing grace, and may they find the strength to endure their problems. Comfort them with your presence and help them to hold on to the knowledge that your son Jesus understands the truth of human suffering. In a moment of silence, please pray for one person who is on your mind today. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who are coming to the end of their journey here on earth and pray that they may come into your presence and kingdom. We pray for all those who have died and now rejoice in the fullness of eternal life. We also pray for all people grieving for the loss of loved ones, either recently or at this time of year. Please grant them your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Gracious God, as we begin a new year, remind us of all the things that are important and worthwhile. Help us to live in the goodness that comes from doing what you want us to do. Help us to put aside anxiety about the future and the past, so that we might live in peace with you now, one day at a time. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Please stand for the peace. Mm -hmm. 
our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace, that the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And Let us offer one another a sign of peace in a suitably socially distanced manner. <laughs> Gracious God, accept the offering of your church, the hearts of your people, join in praise and thanksgiving, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. We sit on kneel for our communion prayer, which can be found on page 7 for our orders of seven. The Lord is here. Yes. Lift up your heart. Yes. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory, made present in our midst, in the coming of the Magi, the King of the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ. The Saviour said to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine out for may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he prayed. He broke the bread. Gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised me. Gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. O oh, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all on the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Believing in the promises of God, as our Saviour taught them, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us the light and life. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. We are continuing to follow the pattern of receiving communion that we have done for most of the pandemic. Uh, so I would ask that uh, because of the Christmas tree, that you use the lectern as a central point. And so uh, you come up on this side of the lectern and uh, go back down on that side. And please come in your bubbles or as individuals and stand at the uh, gap in the uh, communion rail. And uh, I will dip the water wafers in the wine and place them in your hands. And please step away before taking your mask off. To come see you. Thank you. Uh, 
let us pray together the prayer of the first page 10. <clears throat> Lord God, the bright splendor whom the nations see, may we who with the wise men have been drawn by your light discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we have the acclamation of blessing, just a few brief emphasis. First of all, refreshments are available after the service. Uh, just step into the uh, centre at the side there. Um, I know that many of you, like myself, may be frustrated that uh, this uh, pandemic continues, and uh, this, but the situation is uh, of more concern at the moment because of the variant. Um, so we are continuing with the protocols we have in place, which we believe are adequate, or more than adequate, really, uh, and will protect us, particularly those who are vulnerable. So please bear with us as we continue with those. Uh, we're continually reviewing what we're doing uh, based on the latest uh, guidance from the Church of England uh, and from the government. Uh, next week, we return to our more, dare I say, normal pattern of worship. <laughs> we'll return to the situation. Well, actually, it's a new pattern of worship. We've now moved the... Uh, oasis that take, took place here on the first and third Sundays to the second and fourth Sundays. And that's in order to not clash with Piece of Cake, uh, the group which meet on the uh, first and third Sundays. Uh, so just to warn you that that is now a change that will be implemented for next Sunday. So there is no oasis uh, here today. In fact, there's no oasis anywhere in the uh, ABC churches. Uh, in my uh, my sermon, I did mention one or two challenges that we're facing as uh, the diocese and, and the church in this deanery as well, and the changes that are happen that, that are probably going to be happening in the near future. Uh, do not fear them. They will all bring glory to God's name, and that's what uh, is more important. Uh, so please uh, just be aware that changes may happen uh, regarding uh, the way that we uh, do ministry across our deep. I don't think there's any other notices. Um, a big thank you to all who uh, helped decorate and make the church very Christmassy for Christmas, uh, and our beds in fact, uh, but also uh, for all those who have worked hard over Christmas to ensure that we're able to minister to our various communities in the ABC church. We only actually ended up cancelling one service uh, which was really, sorry, two services, which was really a positive thing in my view. Uh, but uh, obviously, as I said, it's constantly under review what's happening and uh, we'll make sure that uh, everything finds out. Um, the best way to do that is by signing up for our e newsletter, which comes out uh, every Friday. We haven't had one over the Christmas period because. Uh, Petra has been on holiday, our administrator, and I've been on holiday as well. So, uh, but uh, I think the, there will be one out this Friday coming with the latest updates of what's happening in the ABC churches. And uh, finally, I just want to say thank you for your continued support of the ABC churches, whether you're in Aston Bryan, Bolton Percy, Colton, or Colton, uh, as we work together to glorify God, to put him first not our own personal needs. Would you please stand? Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. To you be glory and praise forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. To you be glory and praise forever. When the time had fully come, you sent the Son of Righteousness. In him the fullness of your glory dwells. To you be glory and praise forever. May God the Father, who led the wise men by the shining of a star, to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. May God, who has delivered us from the dominion of darkness, give us a place with the saints in light, in the kingdom of his beloved Son. Amen. May the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, with his joy, sorry, shine in your hearts and fill our lives, 
with his joy and peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you, and all those whom you love, now and forevermore. We have seen his glory, the glory revealed to all the nations. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.